Welcome back everybody. This video is kind of going to be a continuation of the last video. I have a couple more things I want to teach you guys about Git, and then I promise we'll be getting back on track. I'm not trying to distract you guys. This stuff is really important to know. So if you guys don't already know about GitHub, it's a place that you can store your repositories. So when you download Git, everything's on your local machine, right? So there's no central server for you to push your code to. When you make a commit, it's just on this machine. But if you want to share that code with other people, you need a centralized server to do that. There's a couple of different ways. One of the ways is using GitHub. So GitHub, you can store open source projects for free or you can pay a couple bucks for private repositories. I decided that I was going to put our code for this series on GitHub so you guys could access it from there too. So what you need to do if you want to find the code is go to github.com forward slash Caleb Curry and then find Signal R Tutorials. That's the URL right there. Now, as you can see, it will basically say the files in the repository and then the commit message for those files. You can see I made an extra commit. I deleted a space just for fun. <laughs> so just so I can show you guys a little bit of how this will benefit you, if you go to this page, you can click clone or download. You can take this URL and you can use the, the fancy uh, git commands, but that's out of the scope of this video. So I'm going to use source tree. Once you're on source tree, you can click clone slash new, paste in that URL, pick a destination where you want that file, that repository to be, give it a bookmark title and click clone. Since I already got it on here, obviously I'm going to skip that step. <laughs> Now, this allows you to look at the source code, go back in time to different sections, and everything like that. Now, one thing I wanted to point out is there's this master here, and then there's this origin slash master. Origin is a name for the central repository on GitHub. So what that means is that master is my local copy of whatever I'm working on. So just to illustrate this, I will make a change. I'm going to add a line on here and then go back to source tree and in the log and log slash history there will be an uncommitted changes. Here is where you can decide what you want to commit into the repository and what you want to keep. So over here you can see what changes I made and obviously I really didn't make any changes at all. Both these lines look exactly the same. But just for kicks I'm going to commit this to the repository. I added that to the staging area and now to make a commit you need to go to file status and say whatever you want. Perfect. Now I can commit that and what you'll see is that there's this new notification on the push which saying basically our local changes are ahead of the centralized server. So you got master and then origin slash master. So we can push those to the centralized server to get the centralized server up to date with our local changes. All right, so it just pushed, and now if you go back to the web browser to GitHub, do a refresh, you can see that the new changes are already visible. I added a blank line. You can just move along. Don't worry about that. That commit is not important. <laughs> so that's all I got to say about Git and GitHub for now. I will be pushing new changes here, so that way you guys can always get the newest versions of my code. If anything isn't working for any reason, check here, and that'll help you get the... Um, the version that you need. One last thing before you go, if you're watching this in the future and the repository is already completed and you want to go back in time to where I am now <laughs> in this video series, all you have to do is just click on that commit. Double click it. It'll ask you if you wanted to um, go into a detached head state which is basically saying you're no longer in the correct path of the repository. You're too far back. You click OK, and then when you go to Visual Studio, it'll have those changes there for you. And you can look through them, follow along, whatever you need to do, copy and paste. You guys get the point. So hopefully this video is helpful. Hopefully it'll help you keep up with the code. And yeah, that's all I got to say. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.